Hello and thank you for tuning in to another Hobby Porter video. Today we're looking at the Toolkit RC M8 multifunction charger. So what I'm going to do in this video is just give you an overview of the, the product. We do have samples going out to our reviewers and they'll probably go into more detail. But uh, today I'm just going to run over the features and give you an idea of what this is all about. So we'll go over the outside first. Um, on this side we've got the balance port and output for batteries. On the rear we've got the DC input and two cooling fans. On um, this side we've got a USB output for powering iPhones and iDevices or, or any USB powered device and a PWM output. Now this port here actually doubles as your uh, software upgrading port. You use the included USB cable and you connect that to your PC and this device will show up on your computer as a USB drive uh, and you simply over or delete the file that's on there, um, copy the, the new firmware in its place and that's it, you're done. Uh, so no fancy updating software or process or anything that can go wrong. Basically, if, if you know how to copy a file onto a USB drive, you can update this without any, any hassles or worrying about bricking it or anything like that. Okay, so what we're going to do for the purpose of the video is uh, we're going to take uh, just a battery and use that as our DC power supply. Um, or you can use your own you know, DC power supply depending how you want to set up the product. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get the battery connected and then I'll run through some of the features. Okay, so let's go ahead and connect the power. There we go. We've got Toolkit RC. Uh, ToolkitRC.com is the website you can go to check for user manuals and firmware updates and things like that. Alright, so let's jump into the charger function. Now you've got on the side here uh, five uh, presets that you can program yourself. Um, so let's just go ahead and, and program one. Uh, first thing you choose is your battery type. So uh, let's choose say LIHB. You can set your voltage, the default 3.5, but if, uh, if your manu battery manufacturer has different specs, you can adjust that. Uh, next thing you can choose is your cell count. You can leave that on auto, which will detect from the balance port, or you can manually set that. So let's say you set it for three cell. Uh, charge, just set that here. Uh, discharge, you can set that as well. And then down the bottom here, you've got your standard uh, charge mode. So storage, uh, discharge, and charge. So super simple. Uh, if you've ever used a any battery charger before you should have no trouble with this at all. Uh, exit out of there and you can see that it's saved that in that second slot. So whatever you modify uh, will be saved and it stays there basically unless you override it with something else. Alright so if you want to now change that one you can just go back in and we'll change that to say two cell, two cell LiPo one amp, uh, discharge, half, and there you go. So that's the charging functions. Uh, pretty straightforward. You should have no trouble with that at all. Okay, let's move over to the measurement functions. All right, so the first one you've got here is PWM. Now this is for a, a PWM input, so you would use this for testing uh, say an older uh, receiver, you'd be testing one of the PWM output channels connected to the input here. Uh, so whatever stick input you gave uh, on the the radio, you would see uh, a reading here. Um, you could also use it for projects or Arduino things like that. Anything, anything that's outputting PWM, basically you can put that output here and then see what it's doing on the screen. Okay, the next one you've got is uh, PPM and SBUS. Now these are kind of similar. Uh, PPM you've got 8 channels there. Uh, SBUS you have 16 channels. And you also have some extra uh, SBUS related information. 
So what this does, uh, again, if you were, if you were, uh, connected, say, a, a receiver from the um, S bus or PPM output uh, into the input here, uh, whatever stick input you give on the radio, you're going to see it show up on the screen here. Uh, so the idea there is, uh, say you're setting up a, a mini quad uh, with a beta flight or etc. type controller, and you're having some trouble and you want to troubleshoot uh, you know, is it a receiver problem or is it a problem with the board? Uh, you can test your receiver uh, here and, and make sure it's functioning correctly. So, uh, you know, just help you with troubleshooting and sort of process of elimination. Okay, the next thing we've got here is the battery testing. So let me just grab a battery for that. And we'll connect the battery here. So just plug in the balance port. You can see there we get the voltage reading. Okay, so battery's connected. Um, functions we've got here, there's a, a built-in balancer. So you can start a balance cycle. Um, there you go, this, this battery is pretty much balanced already, so it's not, not really much to see there. Uh, then we can change this to internal resistance, and uh, we can do a test there. So start the test, give it a moment or so, and there you go, you get a, a basic test report that shows you the um, internal resistance of the battery, which is really helpful if you want to make sure you're using the best batteries in, in your uh, in your fleet of batteries, or perhaps you just want to keep an eye on the health of the batteries. And the last function we've got here is, uh, they call it ESC, but this is basically a simple uh, watt meter, uh, good for up to 15 amps. So this is not the kind of watt meter you're going to use on a large electric aeroplane to test different propellers, etc. Uh, this is more for testing, say, you want the current drawer of all your servos or uh, project work. Um, so it's just a basic watt meter. It gives you a, a 15 amp rated capacity and like most any watt meter uh, basically you put your power supply which is the battery in this case and then your load on the, this side and uh, away you go you're going to get a, a watts display and amps which is your current draw and things like that some basic information all right and then we go over to output now again this is fairly similar to what uh, i've explained before but Pretty much everything's in reverse. So PWM output, um, probably the easiest way to describe to describe this is it's uh, it's like a uh, a servo tester. So you've got a manual uh, which lets you manually input the the value, the US value, so which will you know, be moving your servo. Um, and you've also got automatic modes. And this would be cycling your servo. Um, and you can program the settings on you know, where you want it to start end and things like that. Uh, and then PWM and SBUS again, like I was describing before, but in reverse. So basically the, the charge is going to act like your receiver would act. Uh, so this, this means the charger is now going to output SBUS or, or PPM. Uh, again, you can use this for troubleshooting flight controllers or if you want to try and work out if you've got a bad receiver or just anything that you need to generate a signal um, but perhaps you don't have a, an ESC on hand or something like that. Last thing we've got here is power. Now this makes the charger work like um, a power supply. So you can set your voltage so we're all the way down to one volt. Uh, which is really handy if, if it basically works like a, a desktop power supply um, Which is probably good for you know if you need 5 volt for example you don't have a back handy um, Or you're just doing electronics projects and, and you need a adjustable power supply uh, With also a maximum amp limiter and things like that um, So yeah, that that's the basic power supply functions there's also some modes in here for um, charging some DJI products like the Mavic, Phantom, Inspire, etc. Um, they do require a proprietary plug set 
that will be released at a later date so you can keep an eye out on toolkitrc.com for updates and information on that and we'll back out and so that's uh, that's your measurement and output tools uh, next we'll have a look at settings okay so the last thing we'll go over is the settings uh, the settings are pretty standard, what you'd expect to find on most chargers. The lowest input uh, is good if you're running a, a battery as your power supply. That'll make sure that you don't overdraw the battery, um, uh, make the, the voltage of the battery too low and damage the battery. Uh, input power, safe temp, uh, charge time. Again, the sort of things you'd expect to see on most chargers. Uh, you can set your backlit amount here so if you want to brighten or dim the display uh, contrast buzzer idle beep uh, hub support uh, you choose your language here and then default uh, confirm if you confirm this what that'll actually do is just reset the um, battery save data that you've done so we can do that for the sake of argument we'll go back and you can see yeah, they're cleaned out so uh, we can start adding battery programs back there um, you don't necessarily have to do that though if you want to change if you've made a program here and you want to change it to something else you, you can just go in and, and pick it again and whatever you use last in that slot will stay saved in that slot so there you have it that's the toolkit rc m8 multifunction charger Again, just an overview for you today. We have got samples going out to our reviewers, uh, and I expect that they'll probably go into some more detail and do a few more things with the charges so you can get a better understanding. As always, uh, please like and subscribe. It does help us out a lot, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.